So the reason I think it's so important to think about leadership as a collective endeavor and not simply the job of the ultimate decision maker is that the ultimate decision maker simply doesn't have the levers of control. They can't possibly make all the decisions on their own. So they need to be guided, they need to be checked, they need to be inspired and educated by the people around them. That idea works throughout the organization, whatever level of team unit you're playing in, whether it's the ultimate leadership team in the boardroom or a project management team, of course we need a team captain, we need an ultimate decider, but they're really only doing that on behalf of the team. Most of us operate with two leadership muscles, one where we are in charge, either of a team or a project or a function. So that's when we are ultimately accountable, the A. The other muscle we use, other than the A muscle, is the C one, where we're in a position that's supporting, counseling, cajoling, advising, steering, making things happen. They're two muscles, and too often we conflate both into one person's job. It's the leader, they have to do this. And I think the more explicit we can be about when you're in A mode and when you're in C mode, the less noise there will be around the relationships and around the business. I think it's really important if you want to have influence that you earn that through being completely trusted, your judgment is sound, your competence is beyond question, and you're able to spend time, give yourself the space to think about things that the boss maybe hasn't got the time to think about. Three things I would do straight away, first of all, is decide with your boss what the relationship is going to be. How would the boss like to feel as a result of you being around him or her? Number two, rewrite your job spec and rewrite it as a spec that actually delivers feelings as opposed to stuff. So define your contribution by the emotions you want to invoke in those around you, not simply what stuff you're going to get done. And the third thing I would do is pick up a copy of my book and look at the relationship review in the last two chapters. What is it you can do to really improve your C, as I call them, the number twos of this world? And what is it the A's can do to make that C more effective? And I think a joint reading of that would get to some really practical outcomes.